I made a promise to you that I wouldn't touch the green belt. I broke that promise. And for that, I am very, very sorry. I pride myself on keeping our promises. It was a mistake to open the green belt. It was a mistake to establish a process that moved too fast. Continuing our coverage this evening of that developing news out of Ontario, the Premier of the province is apologizing tonight and reversing course on his decision to open up protected lands for development. Did Doug Ford have any other choice? The front bench is here now to dig into questions like that. Former BC Premier Christy Clark is with us. She's a senior advisor with Bennett Jones. Former Toronto Mayor John Tory is here, as is CTV News political analyst and former NDP leader, Tom Mulcair, hello to all of you. Great to have you back with us this evening. Bye -bye. Uh, John, I'll, I'll, I'll start with you. You're in the, the heart of Ontario there, part of the heart, I should say, in, in Toronto. Did Doug Ford, in your view, have any other choice than to do what he did today? No, I mean, he and many of you have heard me say, and, and I'm sure Christy and, and Tom have both followed this. Uh, you know, if you get the list of recommendations from an Auditor General, the best thing you can do is to say, I accept all of the recommendations. And in Premier Ford's case, he accepted all but one. And the one he didn't accept was to put the land back into the Greenbelt. Well, today, after a lot of chapters in between, uh, he has accepted that recommendation, put the land back, and said he won't touch it again. And I think that's what people want. I don't think he did have much choice. Uh, I, by the way, listening to Rob Benzie a few minutes ago, I don't think there will be any litigation precisely because I don't think anybody on the development side or on the government side will want uh, to have out there who did what to who or who said what to who. So I don't think there'll be any litigation at all. Everybody's just going to have to suck it up and, and decide this was something that uh, happened that shouldn't have happened and on we go. But I think he did what he had to do. When you get into massages and Vegas trips and stuff like that, you're probably done. That's, that's one way to put it, for sure. Christy, I, I, I wonder, uh, to John's point, though, is it necessarily on we go? And I ask because, and, and I raised this in the last panel, but Doug Ford is one of those politicians that definitely has a record of changing course, admitting when something isn't working and, and changing course. And, and it's worked for him. And, and the evidence of that is the last election where he was able to increase his mandate. It took him a very long time and hearing from caucus and looking at internal polling to come to the conclusion that he did today. Does that hurt him in the long term? Well, I think a little bit, yeah. I mean, it, it's always, he's, he's very, he shows real humility when he apologizes, and today we saw that for sure. And I think that works in his favor. I, you know, he does have a great touch for voters, but I do think over time, you know, this kind of thing does hurt you. And when I, you know, when it took so long, and as John said, I mean, the you take the Auditor General's report, you do what he or she said. That's a pretty basic point. Governments that have been around a long time, um, especially after a second election, are less likely to follow that advice. There comes, you know, they're just he's not that he's getting long in the tooth, uh, but I do think incumbent governments that have been getting their way for a long time often overestimate the resilience of the public's patience for them. And I think that's kind of what happened here. So to your question, did he have a choice? I don't think he had a choice. To John's point, did he take uh, too long? Yes, he took too long. Will this hurt him? I think it's hurting maybe isn't the right way to put it. Maybe more, it's going to just erode a little more of his um, the love that the public has had for him in the past. And that erosion is a constant thing the longer you're in government. I was watching the press conference that he gave Tom and, and right away uh, sort of had this image of exactly a week ago when the prime minister came out with his caucus surrounding him as well and did, you know, it was, it's not perfectly analogous, but came out with, you know, an acknowledgement around affordability and a promise to do X, Y, and Z and, and you know, made a, a specific pronouncement following meeting with his caucus. And I wondered, as someone who knows what that's like, uh, if you think that that had something to do with this today, if, if ultimately uh, your caucus getting mad about the way in which an issue is playing for them at the door is a big factor in what you end up doing. Yes, it is a big factor. And uh, to John's point about the, uh, the adventures in Las Vegas, I mean, when you have another minister who steps aside and don't forget ministers are members of the caucus and that person was also excluded from caucus and of course you had the minister of housing who's still in caucus but is no longer a minister and you had a very senior staffer a chief of staff who had to walk the plank people in caucus are sort of going okay but where's the message here and so i think that that's where doug ford's 
to me, sincere and rather rare apology from that senior politician. That's where it comes in. He's good at this. I remember when he got something terribly wrong during the pandemic. He was four square. He stood there and says, I got it wrong and we're going to start over again. Pretty rare in politics, Vashi. I'll give you an example from Quebec, a massive promise that helped Francois go cinch all the seats in the greater Quebec City area, both in 2014 and 2018, to build a new tunnel bridge between the two sides of the St. Lawrence at Quebec City. Huge promise, massive project. Um, just a few months after he got reelected, just dumped it like nothing. And people said, well, are you going to apologize? And he had all sorts of rationalizations why he didn't need to apologize. That's why I think that it has to be acknowledged that what Doug Ford today is so rare, and it takes guts. And is it going to play out? Yes, I, I, it will. I'm, I'm on Christie's page for that. And I also think that it's almost precluded that he would ask for the confidence of Ontario voters at the next election, because this is a whopper on that scale where people say, thanks for the apology. You were able to finish off your term. We kind of like you, but you know what? We're not going to trust you on the big stuff anymore. You're going to have to find somebody else. He'll be there. Do you think that's I think you're wrong about that. He, he, and he's very authentic oh, and very John, genuine. Go ahead. Doug yeah. Ford is a very authentic and genuine person, regardless of what you think of his policies. He's very, he's very authentic. I mean, what you see is what you get from Doug Ford. And when he did that today, that was the real Doug Ford that was appearing because he feels very badly about these things. But he will not, this will be emboldening him, not, not the whole episode, but the way he handled this today and some positive reviews, including yours, Tom, I think will cause him to, uh, to be there. I think he's going to say, that's my guess. We'll see. The, the only thing I would add to that, Christy, and, you know, there is still the potential for the RCMP to investigate. There's a few other uh, sort of investigations that are uh, happening at the same time. And regardless of the authenticity of what he did today, again, I do think there was an impression, and, and the polling sort of backs it up, that he, 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 he kind of got dragged there a little bit, right? It wasn't, you know, he could have done this when the AG report came out a while ago. Yeah, I think that's true. I mean, as I said, the older, older governments get, the less likely they are to, you know, say I'm sorry or take on culpability for, for things. And so you kind of... They, the more likely they are to just sort of wait and see how it plays out. And, you know, it, Peter Lougheed used to say, the most important audience is your caucus. It's the people that are supporting you. Because if you don't have them voting with you in the legislature, you don't have anything anymore. And, you know, it seems to me like he waited. And, you know, probably Trudeau as well for the, for the MPs to say, look, we are hearing this nonstop. It is a major problem. They are the, they are the most re reliable reporters in aggregate of what's going on out there politically. Took too long for this to happen. There's no doubt about it. I think he handled it pretty well, given uh, despite the, the time lag for it. But um, And I'm, I'm with uh, John on this. I think that Doug Ford will run again. And I think he, at the moment, odds look still pretty good for him, despite some serious missteps. Do you think that, uh, Tom, last word to you on this, I, I, you know, just the fact that, I mean, we all get why cost of living was resonating at the door on the federal scale, right? Why the impetus was there for the prime minister and he felt the pressure during caucus. Why do you think this issue, um, the idea of protected land, uh, you know, the, the, the premier kept saying this is about meeting the housing crisis, addressing the housing crisis. He made a exactly. calculation that that Ontarians would think, okay, well, whatever you have to do to, to do it is okay. Obviously, they didn't. Why do you think it resonated the way it did? Well, because he was using that type of Trump line. Donald Trump says, well, I, I did all this bad stuff, but I did it for you to make America great again. And Doug Ford was saying, I did it for you. Don't you need a house? And he even talked to one of the journalists at that press conference saying, you know, you don't have a house. Uh, I'll make sure that you get a house, you know, like Oprah Winfrey, and you get a house, and you get a house, and you get a house. <laughs> but I, I think that at, at some point, the, the average person watching this is saying, hold on, the Auditor General's report also said that there was tons of land outside the Greenbelt to build houses in greater Toronto area. So why did you have to go after these precious wetlands? Why did you have to go after, you know, the, the habitat for the wildlife? Why did you have to go after the prime farmland? Uh, two things remain for me. I, I do think that there are going to be some pretty upset developers, but again, what are they going to be able to do about it? Not a heck of a lot. And it's not over with regard to any potential uh, full full blown police investigation. The OPP, of course, handed, handed it off wisely, I think, to the RCMP to take a look at it. We'll see what happens. But it's not the fact that he's apologized that makes that you know just disappear. It, it remains. And if there's a, if there was indeed a conspiracy, if there were people involved, if there were, there are lots of potential uh, traps for Mr. Ford and the people around him yet to be dealt with. 
The front bench also remains. I have to take a quick break. We're going to turn our attention, though,